horror fans, once again, it is me, the horror Mizumani G, as I continue my Resident Evil film series, it's time to go to the fifth one, and that is Resident Evil Retribution, yes. <laughs> now, if Resident Evil Retribution is a 2012 action horror movie, once again, it was written and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, and once again, it is based upon the video game by Capcom. This one stars Mila Jolovich, back once again. Siona Gilroy is back once again as Jill Valentine. And returning since the first one, Michelle Rodriguez. She's back once again. We also, in this one, we also have Leon S. Kennedy is in this one. Ada Wong and Barry, he's in this one as well. But there's other stuff, people who are not in this one, and we have no reason why they're not. Why is that? Well, I will tell you what I have to say about Resident Evil Retribution. Now, in the fifth one, Alice continues her fight alongside a resistance movement to regain her freedom, freedom from an Umbrella Corporation testing facility. Yes, that's basically what the plot of this one is about. Now, right off the bat, what in the hell is going on? Where's Chris, Claire, and Kmart? Did they survive the attacks on Arcadia where they killed? Well, it seems we really don't know because it seems Paul S. Anderson didn't seem to care as, other than a one-time mention, they're not even in this movie. What the hell did he do? And that's one of the problems I have with the latest entry into the Resident Evil film series. Now, I'm guessing that Anderson decided that since he added game favorites Leon S. Kennedy, Ada Wong, and Barry Burton, along with bringing back Rain Carlos and one... He felt that he didn't need Chris Clare or Kmart. And he said, away with them. I don't need them. And uh, this is why the plot is filled with continuity issues, along with the same bad dialogue and flack acting we've seen throughout this entire series. Now, at least the set pieces in this one are just as grand as they were in Afterlife. Afterlife. Now, when we don't get the Matrix moves, we do get some type of decent action and fight scenes with Alice, Jill, and Rain. However, it's not enough to lift this film to the heights that I'm pretty sure a lot of Resident Evil fans wanted it to be, especially after bringing Chris along in uh, Afterlife, and we get this, and there's no Chris, no Claire, and what are you going to do? Now, I love how the movie started, filming the opening scene backwards to see what happened to Alice and company after the Umbrella Corporation attacked the, attacked the ship. Again, nothing shows what happened to Chris, Claire, or Kmart as their fate are just left ambiguous. We see Alice getting blown out to sea. We see Jill and the rest of the Umbrella forces coming down the ship. We see some of the survivors getting shot. We see the ship blown up. But no Claire, no, 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 Claire, no Chris, or no Kmart. Their fate is just left up in the air. Now, after seeing Alice getting killed by her summer five husband, Todd, that's a returning old fear, we learn that the real Alice is in the underground umbrella testing facility. Now, after a very lengthy exposition by Wesker, which explains what's going on, Alice joins Ada Wong as they attempt to escape the facility, while out Wesker's task force, which includes a returning Luther from Afterlife, attempt to blow up the lab shutting down this facility and getting him back to Washington. Well, but I'll explain about that later. Now, just like in Afterlife, Anderson had lovely set pieces of each area of the lab or replicas of New York's Tokyo, Russia, and Raccoon City. In each of these replicas, we get some nice uh, action uh, pieces, uh, basically from Alice and Ada fighting in the, with the hangman in the New York City replica, uh, the task force shootout from the La Plagas Lagoons in Russia, and we have one final fight between Alice and Jill, along with Luther and Leon against the Bad Rain, more about that later, in the Frozen Tundra. Now, while we don't get the attack of the Alice clones from Afterlife, uh, the clones do make a return here, where we have a Good Rain and a Bad Rain. <laughs> uh, it was nice to see Michelle Rodriguez return to the series despite the limited role she plays in either role. It's like she's there, we'll make the fans happy. Same like Anderson simply decided to bring Michelle Rodriguez back because a lot of people complained they liked her character, Rain, in the first one. So they talked her into coming, but she's just simply a clone. She really does nothing here in, in either the good one or the bad one. It was just, hey, here's Michelle Rodriguez, and that's that. 
The same goes for Ota Fear, uh, returning as Todd and Carlos, along with Colin Simon as One. I'm sure you guys remember, him, remember what happened to him in the first movie. It's nice to see these guys back, but they don't bring anything new to their roles. They're just there because, hey, look, they were good enough in the movies they were in, so let's bring them back as clones. But Anderson's writing doesn't allow them to do anything other than just to see how good they are. You know, Odep, it's Todd, it's nice seeing him and Alice, this nice married couple, because they were swinging, swinging each other uh, in, a, I think it was Apocalypse. No, not Apocalypse, Extinction. They were swinging each other in Extinction, so they decided to have them as a married couple. And I don't even talk about the kid that they have. <laughs> That's the typical child in danger cliche. Now, to go off on a little rant here, this is where I have a huge problem with the film and its continuity issues. I mean, if you're going to bring back Rain, One, and Luther, especially Luther, why not bring back Cliff, Claire, and Kmart? No explanation is given them for their absence is that they didn't exist at all. Uh, I can see Jill or Wes, I can see if Jill or Wesker told Alice that they were even held in another facility or the fact that they're even dead, but the fact we get nothing explained to them all. It would have been nice that, hey, look, we couldn't get we couldn't get the actors, either Ollie Leiter, Wentworth Miller, or Spencer Locke to come back in this film. And an easy explanation, but all we get is just this one explanation, and that's it. Then no one says anything about it, and that's the one thing I don't like when films do this. They should have some type of an explanation as far as the reason why they're not in this film. And you know, all said and done, it's simply just poor writing and storytelling, but it's something we should come to expect from Anderson because, as far as I'm concerned, he really has proven himself to be a very uh, creative writer when writing these movies. Now, Mila Jola Fish, she's fine once again as Alice still being the badass that she is. Uh, while I like the fact they cast an Asian as Ada Wong and Ling Bingbing does a good job playing her, the script doesn't bring out the type of character Wong is in the game. I expect something a little bit different. When I first figured, when I first found out that Ada Wong was in the game, I said that's good. I like Ling Bingbing as an actress. But unfortunately, uh, Anderson's script, she does nothing. All she does say her lines and that's that. Nothing build up, nothing that at least bring out the character that we love uh, Ada Wong is from the game. The same goes for Leon, played by Yuhan Europe. <laughs> I think I pronounced his name. <laughs> we don't see any of the characteristics that make both Leon and Ada popular characters from the game. I mean, they play off each other very well. It's obviously that they care for each other. There is this one little thing that they do in the game, in this movie that kind of shows their how they care for each other, but the film doesn't do anything about it. They're just there to be just to, you know, do some nice particular stunts, look cute, and that's that. Now, Sienna Guillory is back playing the mind control Jill, wearing the outfit most fans re uh, remember seeing from Resident Evil 5. Uh, we finally get to see game favorite Barry Burton, played with glee by veteran character actor Kevin Duran. Uh, you can see that he enjoyed playing Barry. It was nice to see they included his favorite weapon from the game, too. So I truly love seeing Kevin. He's always good at playing these type of characters, whereas a nice hero character or a crazy-ass character. Now, the film brings some of the bioweapon monsters from Resident Evil 4 and 5, such as the Hangman or the Executioners from Resident Evil 5 or the Las Plagas from Resident Evil 4. Uh, we also get a Super Licker. And the running zombies, yes, we got running zombies in here. However, don't expect to see any real blood because most of it is CGI and it's terrible and the 3D effects doesn't help it either. Uh, we get was one kill in the game that's bloodless. I mean, come on. You got zombies here, guys. We should see some type of gore, but unfortunately, I think throughout the entire series, we never really see any gore. Now, as we head to the final film in the series... This does have its moments with some decent action and fight scenes and night set pieces. Nice seeing Michelle Rodriguez return, the addition of Leon S. Kennedy, Aiden Wong, and Barry, and Joel of its kicking some zombie ass. However, more bad writing from Anderson and continuity just simply brings it down. Now, this really could have been a decent addition to the series, but I'll say it's not the worst, but this could have been so much better. <laughs> I'm going to give Resident Evil Retribution only 
two out of my five bloody gold coins. Only get two out of my five bloody gold coins. Like I said, he Edison knows how to set up set pieces. I think that's some, something that he's good at. Uh, he does some good action scenes throughout the series, but unfortunately he just can't write a decent script, and the continuity issues really piss me off. So, horror fans, once again, that is my review and video for the fifth Resident Evil film in the series, Resident Evil Retribution. First of all, what do you think about Retribution? Did you enjoy it? Did you like seeing Leon Smith and Aiden Wong and Barry in this film? And are you puzzled as the reason why we don't see Chris, Claire, or Kmart? Uh, please leave your comments on the comment section. Tell me what you thought about Resident Evil Retribution. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put up new videos such as this one. And if you like this video, please like and share. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G. And always remember, horror rules. <laughs> I'll see you in my next video. I'm out. You're all going to die down here.